why do you guys think uh, it, it is so difficult or at times even uncomfortable to have a conversation about money? I feel like because we're all going through it, but it's it's like if we ask each other, oh, cuánto ganas, oh, how much do you make, how much, you know, it's, it's a tema delicado, it's a delicate subject. And that's cross-cultural, cross-communities, obviously, but especially in our community, since we are generally poor and going through it, you know, we can sentirnos menos, you know, we could feel like we're, because like my dad would say, like, it's some, some people can confuse it as un producto de esfuerzo, a product of your effort. But again, that's not necessarily true because capitalism doesn't operate that way. Um, so, yeah, I think um, one of the, the ways I see it is that like saying like, la gente habla, like people talk, whether you're doing good or bad. Like, I think it's like a double-edged sword. If you're doing well, people are going to be talking about it. So people are afraid to share, like, I earned this much or I have this much in investments. And then the same is true if it's the opposite, right? Like, oh, you barely make this much or like you have nothing saved and people are very weary of getting judged. And I think it does lend itself to that where it's like, um, la ropa sucia se lava en casa, like you want to keep everything. Um, oh, yeah, like behind closed doors. So I think it's, it could be touchy because you don't want to feel judged. You don't want to feel like you're very different than everyone else in your family and your like friend circle of friends whether you're doing really well or you're doing um, not as great so I think it it goes back to that where culturally we don't want people to kind of put us in that different side of like a different bucket what do you think Ruben? what I think yeah I think two things are coming up one is in hearing us all share about some of the experiences that we grew up, it's really fascinating how perception is not reality. What I mean by that is that we all come from families who, who, who had either businesses or careers. We grew up with working professionals and, and that's something that needs to be acknowledged, right? Yeah. Um, but as you said, Fran, uh, Francisco, like your dad lost his business. My dad has lost businesses. My dad has had to open and shut down karate dojos. Um, uh, we grew up moving almost every single year because our finances were all over the place. So when you think about the difference between someone being houseless and someone being housing insecure, we grew up being housing insecure. You know, I, I don't know that many people that grew up in, in more than 13 different places. Um, and that was our normal. And, and, and it was, did you ever watch the, the movie, uh, A Beautiful Life about World War II and the dad and the son and the dad makes like the, the, the concentration camp, like a, a game for the kid. Oh, that's, um, yeah. that, that was my dad. My dad made like being working poor and being housing insecure a game. Like he almost made it like, we almost look forward to moving as much as we look forward to Christmas. It was some like epic level psychological shit wow. of, of him being able to, to turn that into a game of like how exciting it is that we get to have so many homes as opposed to people that just get to have one home. So the value set was internal to the culture of our family. The perception was that our family had it all together because our, our family had karate dojos and my mom was selling clothes and perfumes and they had this perception of our family thriving. Nobody had any idea that my mom was undocumented and that so much of our money was going to the immigration process of my mom and that we were losing so much of that money to that immigration process. No one understood the concept of like, we were working a lot, but when you work in Mexicali and you earn pesos and you, and you, change pesos to dollars, you lose a lot of your money. So all of those nuances of what the perception of our family was to what was actually going on in terms of our finances was very different. So that's something that's coming up to me, like the perception versus reality in terms of the finances and family experiences. The second thing that's coming up to me is I love this, what you all brought up which is like, why do we struggle so much to have these conversations? And, and one of you said, you know, that's the way that capitalism operates. That is the way that capitalism is built. Your worth is derived from your labor and your wealth. So automatically within a family, 
cool. Can we just acknowledge that our blood families have all kinds of generational shaping? There's a lot of harm. There's a lot of healing that needs to happen. So any any invitation to drama, uta madre, like it like <laughs> boom, it's a bomb, right? So for for tios amongst themselves to know that one earns more than the other, ya valió madre, wey. You've activated capitalism and machismo and all that kind of shit. Because now the one that earns the less gets treated the worse. In the same way that the one that earns the most, for whatever the reason, has the most power in the family, even though they might potentially be the most toxic person in the family. Yeah. And they shouldn't have power in the family because they're the most toxic ones. But just because they earn more, they have more power in the family. That's capitalism. That's patriarchy. That is machismo combining our families. So I think that's why it's so hard to talk about money in our families because you know that talking about family creates power hierarchies. So the, le the less that you talk about money, the less that that becomes a factor in the power hierarchies of families. Same thing amongst like the mujeres and the hombres, but I wanna give it up to like our mujeres. Honestly, y'all, mujeres have been running our families whether we wanna accept that shit or not. Yeah. They have plan A, B, and C, and they're always ready to, for some shit to go down, y tienen su guardadito here, and they left a little bit of money over there, and they have, you know, whatever's gonna happen, that when the man fucks up, because the man always fucks up, they got already plan A, B, and C. You know, I, I know that, I don't know if it happened to you all, but I know that more than once, my mom has been like, look, we have this money. I'm not gonna tell your dad, but if something happens, here's where the money is, just in case I'm not around and you have to pay rent, you know, like that kind yeah. of shit. So I, I'm just putting that out there as like things that that's the reality of our families and the dynamics that we don't talk enough about. Because I feel that if we were to talk about this more, we can actually start taking better care of each other and not just let these like legacy harm cultures of patriarchy and machismo continue harming us beyond just the relationships, but also financially. Those two are interdependent. Yeah, you, you brought up a, a really interesting point. And I'm sure like in, in future episodes, we'll talk more about in terms of like the capitalistic structure and how it's like taboo to talk about how much you earn with your coworkers, but that's like a way to keep like wages suppressed and hidden and, and really keep things under wraps, but yeah. it only helps out, you know, like the powers that be, right? Like the company, the, the owners, um, the people that are doing all the decisions and have all the power. So I'm sure we'll get into that, but I thought that was a, an interesting point. Um, and how it also like has a similar impact in the family structure. Yeah, because I mean, like capitalism is all about the individual, you know, rugged individualism. And so naturally, I feel like our communities are more communal, more collective. We're tied together by bonds that other communities perhaps aren't. Um, and that goes across like most communities of color. But like Ruben said, like, you know, when, when we let capitalism infiltrate our family structures that's when kind of that that generative collective helping each other out over generations over decades over across families across friendships that can interfere uh, as well capitalism doesn't really reward labor as much as it rewards to the same extent um, ownership right so um, creating value versus owning the value we create once it, just talking about these things about money amongst family members we can wake up to certain harsh realities that um, we operate you know in as far as our society 